Hi guys, in this lesson we'll take a look at the ideal CSDR reactor. So the first thing we've got to ask is what is a CSDR? So a CSDR stands for a continuous stirred tank reactor, which is a vessel that's similar to a batch reactor with the addition of constant flow in and constant flow out of the system. Now CSDRs have a much greater efficiency than the batch reactors because they can handle liquid phases processes as well as liquid solid suspensions. So we have a more versatile piece of equipment compared to a standard batch reactor. Now when we model or design any of these pieces of equipment, it's helpful if we have a set of assumptions that we make when we carry out the calculations, because this will make the calculations a bit easier. So here what we'll focus on is the ideal CSTR. So in our online course that we, we offer to all our students, we go into further details on non-ideal systems, so we have non-adiabatic and non-isothermal systems. So we look at the pros, the cons, the modeling and some examples for these kind of systems as well. So be sure to go and check that out via our website. So the assumptions that we're going to make here for the ideal CSTR is that we have steady state conditions. Therefore, we have no accumulation within the system and that we have perfect mixing throughout. Now when we model any of these reactors, we use what's known as the general mole balance. And this is our template in which we can tailor to suit our set of assumptions. So what we have here is we say that the amount of A that's introduced per unit time must be equal to the amount of A that leaves per unit time plus or minus the amount of A that reacts per unit time, plus the amount that is accumulated of A per unit time. Now we can rewrite this in terms of nomenclature, whereby we have F, so F0 and F, these are the flow rates. CA0 is for the initial concentration of A. CA is the final concentration of A. Now we have plus or minus here because depending on whether we are reacting A or producing A will determine whether or not this value is positive or negative. And then for the actual reaction itself, what we have is the rate expression, so minus RA multiplied by the volume of the system plus, and then the accumulation term is the volume multiplied by the partial differential of the concentration with respect to time. Now, since we have steady state conditions, we can neglect the accumulation term, which means our equation would rewrite as the following, whereby we can cancel out this term here. So what we're left with is F0 CA0 equals FCA plus or minus minus RA multiplied by the volume. Now, the other set of assumptions that we made was that we have steady state conditions. So, and we also have perfect mixing. So what we can then say is that F0 must be equal to F because if we have steady flow, then the flow rate that enters must be the same as the flow rate that leaves. So therefore we could make F0 equal F. And then what we can also do is divide by F. That way we will reduce the number of F variables. So after we make F0 equal F, divide by F, we get this expression here. Now this is CA0 in terms of CA. Whereas we want to know what the final concentration is going to be, based off the initial concentration, the volume, the flow rate, and the rate constant. So what we do is we rearrange and we get this expression here. And this is the modeling for an ideal CSTR in order to calculate the final concentration based on the initial concentration and the volume and the flow rate of the system. 
So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this lesson helps you understand how to model ideal CSTR reactors. Be sure to check out our online course where we go into the details for the order of CSTR reactors and we look at more details for non-ideal systems. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and leave any comments in the comment section below and we hope to see you again.